if I killed your favorite part of me? Would you swap me for my enemy? I'll give you half a chance to make you see Good morning, welcome back. Day 58, and for today's adventure, I've decided to fit an exhaust to my project bike, and I've chosen an exhaust that doesn't fit, as you can see. Well, it wouldn't be any fun if it went straight on, so let's see what I've got to do to make it fit. Right, okay, simple task. This is my Tech Bike Parts Universal Reverse Cone Megaphone Silencer. It's got a slash cut end on it, which I think is glorious, and if you look inside, it's got a little collar inside there where you can put a DB killer, so it's nice and quiet. Other than that, it's straight through, as you can see. And it's a lovely piece of kit, high quality stainless steel. This is all, brackets all TIG welded on. That's a really nice thing. They're available from Tech Bike Parts and I'll leave a link in the description. Now, I've got to fit this to the bike, 53 mil this end and 53 mil on the link pipe. So it ain't gonna fit over. Now, I know you can definitely get reducers and expanders. You can go to any exhaust company and they'll sell you a piece of steel tube that expands on one end and is reduced the other end and you fit one in there, one in there, job done. But I don't wanna do that. I don't like that kind of thing. I like it to fit straight onto the link pipe and that means modifying the link pipe. All I've got to do with this, slice the end off because it's too long anyway. I wanna take about three inches off that. And with that piece I'm going to take off, I'll turn that into a reducer. And rather than faffing around clamping things, I'm going to weld it inside the link pipe and make it permanent. One piece reduced end link pipe. I can then slot this straight over the top. And once it's then on and it's fitted, in the next one after this, I can make a nice little three-way carrier to bolt it to the frame. So that is then my exhaust mounted. But for today, the task is the link pipe reduction. So this fits over it. Once again, link in the description. silicon in that, clamped down, sealed for life. Excellent. One nice little solution. Okay, whip that off. Just got to drill that, plug weld it in place. That's that done. Right, okay, um, just in case this can help you, you're going to do this sort of thing yourself. If you're going to drill a hole in a piece of tubing, which I am, you need to centre punch that piece of tubing. If you put it in the vise, the chances are you'll squash it anyway. And if you then go and centre punch it, then you can dent it. The piece of tubing will actually end up with a dent rather than a centre punch, and that's not good. So the easiest way to centre punch a piece of tubing without damaging it is grab an old bit of bar stock. It's an old scrap bar stock like that. Anything will do. That's an old bit of aluminium. Stick it in your vise with about two inches of it sticking out. Bang it up nice and tight and then pop that piece of tubing over the end of that piece of bar and rest the tubing where you want to center punch it 
on the actual bar. So it's resting solidly on something underneath. Effectively, it has an anvil underneath it to absorb the center punch and you'll get a nice crisp dint for the drill bit to go into. And it's just a case, obviously it's a bit of a jug and you know, wherever you're gonna do it, have a handy assistant to help you if you need, whatever. Then you can put the center punch on top knowing that there's no space under that piece of tubing. It's gonna go straight into the piece of bar stock, your little anvil and accept it and you'll get a nice clear center punch first time. Also, the other side of it is you don't need a great big crater of a center punch. This is stainless steel. You just need enough for the drill bit to grab hold of and start going through where you intend it to. There we are, simple. So whenever you find little bits of bar stock, that sort of thing, don't throw them away. They're always useful. Ain't odd, is it? Um, once you've got your center punches and you're ready to go, three things that I've always found work for me. One is use some cutting oil. Now there's cutting and drilling oil. You can use all manner of different cutting oils. There are specialized stainless steel cutting oils, but don't be too posh. At the end of the day, some cutting oil is better than no cutting oil. The second thing is slow down your drill. If you're gonna cut stainless steel or drill holes in stainless steel, try and run your drill as slowly as possible. This old machine goes down to 525, 525 RPM. That's nice and slow. Ideally, I hear machinists saying that 400 is about ideal for cutting holes or drilling holes in stainless. So the slowest mine possibly goes is 525. So I've got that set by putting the belt on the right set of pulleys. And finally, a brand new drill bit. A brand new drill bit, fresh out the box, not used before, that gives me all the chance in the world. It's not gonna go blunt unless I make it. And the easiest way to make your blue drill bit go blunt on stainless steel, especially tubing, is to try and pull on it too hard. Don't lean on it, monkey boy. Take it steady. The drill will cut through the stainless steel at its own pace. If you lean on it, it won't cut any faster. It will just blunt faster. So let the drill do the cutting, as they say. Use the cutting oil and run your machine as slowly as it will go. And you should be okay, hopefully. <laughs> There we go, four clean holes, drilled first time. The drill bit gets to live another day, and the cutting oil smells like macaroons. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, I'm just gonna, just gonna deburr these holes. I get asked about these tools quite a lot, so what I'm gonna do is put a link to these in the description today. These are a little deburring tool from Weha, or Viha, um, and they fit into, I'll show you up close, Standard screwdriver that takes bits, fits in the end, and then you just press it in the hole and give it a clockwise twist. It takes all the burrs and the fuss out of the way. Here we go. First time. Every time. Now they're not cheap, admittedly, but then I think we all know that good ain't cheap and cheap ain't good and they will last you a lifetime, as the saying goes. I've had these for years, still serving me like the day they were new. Nicely deburred. Okay, that's got to go in there, and I've got to weld those holes up with plug welds. Right, now at this point, I reach for my weld mask and go and get on with the job, but not today. This particular weld mask, it's being retired. This was a gift from a friend of mine in Australia, a Mr. Brett Snow. Thank you, Brett, for this. This was about nine or 10 years ago, Brett sent me this as a gift. He said, look, this is what you need. That handheld archaic thing you're using from the 1970s won't cut it, use this instead. Now this is an auto darkening mask. But after nine or 10 years of service, it started to fail. What happens now is I'll strike up an arc and just now and again, one in every half a dozen strikes, I find I get a flash of full light before it darkens. It's just failing to darken quick enough. I don't know if it's wearing out or the light sensitive cell is failing, I don't know, but ultimately all things come to an end, all equipment wears out eventually. So I wanna say thank you to Brett for that. Brett Snow is a mate now, I sent him something in return and we're good friends and he's been watching a very long time. So the old world mask you sent me is getting retired 
display and I'm going to hang it on the wall as a keepsake because it's my old favourite and it'll always be there as an emergency if I've got nothing else. But while that gets retired and stood to one side, instead of that, thanks to our patrons and thanks to those who support us, what I've managed to do is treat myself to an upgrade. So time for a new mask. While I was shopping for personal protective equipment, finally, after many years, I treat myself to a proper face shield. Trouble trying to laugh at things you say Don't turn away Cause when the back is turned, the eyes are straight There's love and face I sit and wait for her to cancel praise There's lust that flakes The beginning of the end has come today Maybe I wanna be alone With eyes like waterfalls Maybe I wanna be alone With eyes like waterfalls Lady, the all the seeds you sown Just died like bitter falls Maybe I wanna be alone With eyes like waterfalls Right, there we go, day 58, a really nice result for that, a permanently welded in exhaust reducer. And that joint means I can slip my can on and it's exactly the same diameter as the link pipe, not that usual step that you get with slip on cans. This is a far nicer looking result. It also means that with a slightly wider clamp that I've ordered, I can cover the slots that allow this can to clamp on and at the same time it will cover the joint itself. So with a little bit of high temperature silicon in there, clamp it down with the bolt on the inside, you'll see nothing, just a silver band at that point, but the pipe itself will be one thickness all the way through. A really nice and subtle looking result. Now that just leaves the hanger. Obviously here I've got two points on the frame and a point there, so a three point hanger to make in the next video. This is the standard one from the factory. Looks like something off a Scammel handyman, so that ain't gonna work. I'll make something that's in keeping with the rest of the bodywork that I'm making. I've got some of that eight mil bar. I can turn up some stuff on the lathe to make the little lugs and I'll weld it together and make a nice little exhaust hanger in the next video. So there we are. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. Take it easy, ride safe, and I'll see you next time. Wanna be alone with eyes like waterfalls, maybe. I wanna